This is John from Remotify.io and in this video I will be taking you through the big new features included in version 2.5 of Control Surface Studio. Drag and drop functionality is now available for all scripts, mappings, controllers and controller inputs. This gives you the ability to quickly and easily rearrange the order of your mappings. To drag and drop a mapping, simply click on its icon and then drag it to the new position. As mappings have a hierarchy, for example volume mappings must be placed inside a track mapping, you will be prevented from dropping mappings into an incorrect position and the mapping will go back to its previous position. As well as rearranging individual mappings, you can drag and drop groups of mappings such as tracks, modes and even entire scripts. This makes it extremely simple to set the order that your modes activate in. And the same applies to the order of your device banks too. Each mapping now has dedicated duplicate and delete buttons. This replaces the old copy and delete right click options. Clicking a mapping's duplicate button will instantly create a copy of the mapping below with the name of the mapping you duplicated and the word copy. Duplicating mappings such as tracks, modes and devices will also duplicate any child mappings contained inside them. You can also duplicate entire scripts and controllers. The delete button next to each mapping can be used in the same way, allowing you to delete individual mappings or groups of mappings. When you click the delete button, a message will pop up asking if you are sure that you want to delete the mapping. You can stop the message from appearing each time by checking the Don't Show This Message checkbox, or go into the Settings menu and check the Don't Show Delete pop-up checkbox. In order to speed up the controller building process, you can now click on a controller input and drag it into position in the MIDI controller area. Doing this will automatically update its position in the settings form and it will automatically snap to the grid lines. It's important to note that controller inputs can only be moved when viewing the controller manager. When you switch to the script manager, the inputs will be locked in place. A major new feature in version 2.5 is the ability to send your own customised bi-directional LED feedback settings to your controller. Feedback options can be set at the controller level, the script level and even at the individual mapping level. The controller's settings form now includes options to set default LED on and LED off settings. The script settings form now has a global feedback section. Setting this to custom will display a number of options that override the controller's default LED settings. Here you can also turn LED feedback on or off globally for the script. You can also override the global script settings in the LED feedback section of each individual mapping settings form. Here you can set the values to send back to your controller on a pair mapping basis, as well as setting which input to send to. You can even send the feedback to multiple inputs if you like, or no inputs at all. The controller settings form has a section named color assignments. Previously this was not being used, but is now linked up with the script manager. In this section you can enter colour names and assign the name to the velocity value which the controller uses to display that colour. Then when you are selecting the LED feedback values in your script, all of these colour assignments will display in the list, making it easy to select the correct colour for your feedback. Session boxes now have their own LED feedback section which allows you to set feedback values for the various clip states. The new offset position options give you the ability to set the position that the session box will appear in when it is activated. Setting these options to NA means that the session box will remain in its previous position. Another new option added to session boxes is combination mode. When this is turned on, your session box can be linked with session boxes from totally different scripts which also have combination mode turned on and you can move them together in sync as though they are one unified script. We have also added three new input types to the control manager Endless Encoder, LED Display and Text. Endless Encoders are very similar to the knob input type the only difference being that they look slightly different in the MIDI controller area. 
LED displays can be used for anything on your controller which is used to display data received from live. The text input type is simply used to display text in the MIDI controller area. You can use this to simply add notes and titles. It has options in the settings form to add text which will display in the MIDI controller area, options for font size and colour. For a full list of all the new features and updates that come with version 2.5, check out the change log. A link to this will be added in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and we hope that you enjoy using Control Surface Studio 2.5.